Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Listen, I wanted to do something with you guys that I think is going to be fun. Because we got a lot of new members to Shea Treasure. A lot of new members who may have not seen these videos. Um, some of you who have been around for a long time may have not caught these. Because we all know how the notifications work at times. But I've decided to take you all for a trip down memory lane with Spill It Boy TV. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take a trip down memory lane and it'll be fun because we'll get to see have I changed? Am I the same? Who knows? I'll let you be the judge and I'm sure you all will have no problem typing it and telling me oh bitch you changed or Oh, you're the same nasty bitch you've always been. <laughs> anyway, go and enjoy the videos. I'm here. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah, let's take a trip down memory lane, guys. <laughs> Hey everybody, how are you? Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Um, my name is James Caldwell and this is part of my series where I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, literally this is, this video is going to be about just when you think that you have actually seen it all. Really. Just when I think, you know, it, there's plenty of times when I think I've actually, I've seen all that people can do. I've seen everything, you know, the furthest length that they will take some shit. And every time I do that, I look up and it's like, nope, somebody goes a little further than what they've been before. Yesterday, I'm actually, I was agreed to do the hair of a, uh, uh, an acquaintance. And she calls me and she says, you know, hey, um, I'm going to get this uh, rib dinner or whatever. Do you want one? And I'm like, sure. You know, sure, no problem. What do you want? And I says, okay, I'll just take um, the greens and the macaroni and cheese as the sides. Cool, no problem. So, I wait. And it's about 5.30, quarter to 6 when she actually gets to my house. I put the dinner to the side and I'll go ahead and get started because I had a lot of work to do. Um, go ahead. Finish everything up. I don't get this dinner until maybe midnight. I actually end up going to eat this here dinner. And I remember her saying that they took and um, they forgot your macaroni and cheese. So this is okay. No problem. She said I had an extra green bean. So I put the green, the extra green bean in with your dinner. I said, okay, cool. No problem. So... I go ahead and, and, and I just open it up and the green beans are actually in like an extra container like you got a, a extra side. You know, the, the dinner itself came in a, you know, a um, bin that has compartments. So I just took the top off of the green beans and literally just stuck the rest of it, went, you put it all into the microwave. So I pull it out and in the midst of it spinning and all that business in the microwave, the green beans has shifted. So. I said, let me go ahead and just take this out because I don't want to spill it. So I go to take the green beans out when I go to sit down to eat. And lo and behold, just when you thought you've seen it all, underneath the green beans was just a few kernels of motherfucking macaroni and cheese that were left. Because nobody forgot my macaroni. She fucking ate it. She fucking ate it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I just sat there and I just kind of looked at it. And I said, are you kidding me? Like, where do they do this? Where do they do that? Where do you get a dinner for a person and eat the side dish out and then trade them off with some bullshit? So I said, okay, fine, whatever. And I, and I said, just stop it. Because I, I, I said, maybe I'm just too into... What the fuck it is that I'm doing here. 
And I just said, you know, you didn't pay anything for it. But then I said, no. Like, where, who does that? Who does that? Like, I would never do that. And honestly, just when you think you've seen it all, somebody will come up with some extra bullshit and, and throw that bullshit into the game. Where the fuck does that go on at? Oh, people. People never cease to surprise me. Then I go on and the greens and the green beans basically taste just alike. Um, at that point when I tasted them, I understood why my macaroni was stolen because it was probably the best thing on the plate because there was, I don't know what type of seasoning they use for the green beans and the greens. But like I said, they taste just alike. And I, I'm willing to to like go out on a limb and say it's a new seasoning called Scorch. Because that's what it tastes like. Like they had scorched in the bottom of the pan. And you know, when you get greens or uh, string beans, anything like that, any vegetable, if it scorches in the bottom of the pan, the taste goes all through the pot. Really? Stolen macaroni and cheese, scorched green beans, scorched fucking greens, and then I look up beef ribs. Who in the fuck wants beef ribs? Nobody. If it's not going to shoot my blood pressure up two or three spots, I don't fucking want that shit. And they were just literally just globs of fat. I just ended up throwing the whole goddamn dinner away. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say the macaroni and cheese was probably the best thing out of the whole dinner, which was stolen. And I'm just saying, where did they do that at? Where did they do that at? I've never heard of such. Stealing the sad dishes out of somebody's dinner. Never heard of such. Just when you think you've seen it all. All right, guys. Thank you for clicking on the video. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Um, I was pretty tickled by it. Hopefully it'll tickle you. It really did make my day. I was pretty hungry last night, but it did pretty much fucking make my day. Where the fuck did they do that at? You guys can thumbs up the video or thumbs down the video. You know how that works. And feel free to leave me comments. I would love to know what you guys are thinking about this bullshit. All right. I am James Caldwell, speaking for SpillItBoy.com. You can follow me on Twitter at SpillItBoy.com. At SpillItBoy, excuse me. And I will talk to you guys soon. And don't steal the goddamn macaroni and cheese out of people's dinners. It's rude. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for clicking on the video. Um, Here we go this morning. I, I, oh, I hate approaching these little, um, these little things, but it's, it's got to be done. Um, I was running through my internet stuff and I ran into a little video where I, um, it was funny at first. It was funny the way things were going, but then at a point it got to a point where it wasn't funny to me anymore. So I definitely want to address it. I want you guys to take a look and, and then let's talk about it. Um, I'm going to give you what my feelings are about it. And then, you know, you guys can leave me comments on whatnot, and then we can go back and forth and we can decide where we're going to go from there and see if maybe you could change my mind or, you know, or just whatever. You know how we do. So just hold with me one minute. I want to play this little video for you guys. Hold with me. She doesn't touch anything. You're a liar. You're in bed and you don't touch anything? I don't touch anything. So then what's the kind of a relationship is this? Well, I kiss her and I love her. You kiss her and you love her. Yes. So you give big kisses at night. Yes. And they're just on the lips, that's bullshit. Yes, Grandma, I That is bullshit. And you know it. You don't kiss just her lips with those lips. That is bullshit. What else do you kiss with that mouth? Grandma, we're not going to talk about this. I never heard of this in my life. I never heard of this. I only had one thing when I got married. That whole week went in and that was the end of it.
But what do you want me to say? That's how I got pregnant. I know, Grandma. I know how pregnant But you ain't going to get pregnant with her. I know that. She puts her tongue in there? She doesn't put her tongue in there, Grandma. You put your tongue in her? I don't put my tongue in hers, Grandma. I cannot deal with you right now. Does your mother know what you do? I'm sure she knows. How come I'm the only one in this world that doesn't? Because have? you're like 90. So anybody my age wouldn't know? No. Some people even younger than you wouldn't know. So what is the secret thing that you do? It's not secretive, Grandma, but I'm not going to talk about it with you. It's not secretive. All right, would you, you talk? just don't kiss. All right, I don't just kiss her, yes, but I'm not going to talk about it. Because you kiss her whole. Grandma. I don't kiss her whole. She kisses yours. No. She kisses your tits. <laughs> I never heard of this. If a woman touched my tits, I'd slap her on the face. Because you're not gay, Grandma. So you like her to touch your tits? Well, she's my girlfriend. I love her very much. She's not your wife? She will be one day. Oh, you're going to marry her? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. You get married when you're like this? Yes, Grandma, you can get married if you're gay. But what is, what's the purpose of getting married for? All right, you loved your husband. You got married to him. Yeah, but that's the way God made the world. All right, well, God made me the way that I am. And he said you're going to get married? He didn't say that. He doesn't care, Grandma. How do you know? Because God well, loves I mean, me. How come nobody, no priest and nobody said, God said, okay, for women to marry and men to marry? I didn't hear that, did you? No, but I don't care. You don't care about God? I care about God, Grandma, but I'm not really concerned about... As long as you got your girlfriend, you don't care about God. Pretty much. Okay. So, like I said, in the beginning, when I started watching, I was, like, laughing at her because I'm like, this old lady is just too much. And, you know, and it's like she was, I don't know, it was, it was, it just was funny to me. It wasn't offensive at first. I thought she's just trying to get some understanding of whatever. But then the more she went on, the more I realized grandma was a manipulative old bitch is what she was. She knew exactly, she knew exactly what the conversation was. She knew exactly what they do, and the more her ass went on talking, she knew the whole lesbian experience, okay? So, now, though we should respect elders, we should respect them, I'm not being played by no old bitch playing no games with me, okay? I, I just, it, it got to a point when her clowning reached an all-time high, and it was just fucking disrespectful. And the reason I know that, because my grandmother will do some shit like that. Because my grandmother, I love my grandmother dearly, dearly, but my grandmother will go sideways with you in a motherfucking minute. So you got to watch her. You got to watch her. We respect her, but you got to watch Miss Thelma, because Miss Thelma will take you right on down the left side of the road. And so with that old whore that was in this video, she was really trying it. When she sat there and she going to keep on going, and she puts her, her, her tongue in your hole. The more she talked, the more she knew about it. And don't be um, bamboozled because she's 90 years old. Them old motherfuckers have done shit back then that you will never be able to figure out. That's why you got a whole bunch of your motherfucking cousins and shit that you didn't know as your brothers and sisters and shit like that. Them motherfucking old people and they motherfucking secrets. And I'm going to give you a little uh, little point of reference. Peyton Place. Go back to Peyton Place. Peyton Place is a black and white movie. It was made back in 1957. 57 now. That movie, some motherfucker had to write it, right? It was written in 56 in a book form. And everything was going on in that motherfucker movie. Incest, rape. Cheating, sneaking, creeping, all that shit. So if they was writing it in 56, you know they was motherfucking performing it in 46, right? Okay, don't be fooled. Don't let them old folks fool you, honey. Them old folks got more secrets than a little bit. 
but she did that old lady. And I still was laughing at some of the shit she was doing, but she was being disrespectful as hell. She really was. When she says, oh, you're going to, oh, you're going to marry her. Oh, you do that. All oh, that wasn't that but shade. That was shade, shade, shade. Child, these folks and this little gay issue, honey, it's always be a drug out of content. It, it just is always made to be so much. The fuck, you got a lesbian. Let's move on. Now what? Does your mother know what you do? Did anybody know what the fuck you did, Grandma? Because where did you actually think, pick up all that lesbian stuff? Where'd you pick that up? Oh, he went in my hole, and that was it. And that's how I had kids. Yeah, and that's probably true. Because back then, when she was a young girl in her 20s, yeah, that's what the men did back then. They went in your hole, and then they went across town to the whore on the other side of town and had a great time. But them housewives, them bitches ain't know nothing about a climax or an orgasm or making love because it didn't happen. He basically did just that. He went in your hole and gave you kids. It was the bitch next door that you play bridge with that licked your pussy and gave you an orgasm. That's where they found all that, all that bullshit out. Now you trace your history. Huh. Them old housewives was a bet, Chatty. You thinking they playing bridge, Chatty? They popping black beauties, trying to keep their shape and shit and carry it on. Honey, don't let them old girls fool you, honey. Them old girls got some shit with them. But that grandmother, that grandmother, she wasn't a, I don't believe she's innocent by any means. There's probably a book out somewhere about her motherfucking ass from back in the day. She knew way too much. Anyway, that's just my opinion. And I could be possibly out of order for talking about that girl's grandmother, but I'm telling you what I see. When I looked at her grandmother, I saw another version of my grandmother. My grandmother's a motherfucking mess. It is what it is. I don't not love her, but it is what it is. Don't let them old motherfuckers fool you. Anyway, on that note, this is where I'm going to wrap this video up. You guys can thumbs up or thumbs down the video. Um, Leave me comments and let me know what you think. You know, and again, it really is funny. She's funny. She's a funny motherfucker, but I'm um, disrespectful all at the same time. <laughs> oh, rude old bitch. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, I'll talk to y'all later. Leave me comments and tell me what you think. Hey, guys, you know what? <clears throat> this is so funny. It's funny to me. Anyway, thank you for clicking on the video. I want to share something with you about, it's another New Year's thing. Here I go running my mouth again. I don't know why my mouth is running today, but I just felt like running my mouth. But something funny that happened today was, okay, so I talked about my other video that I haven't been um, doing my writing like I should be. And one thing that I never do enough is I never, ever get the chance to actually make things for myself as much as I want to. So... Um, you all know that I design clothes and I make clothes and all that. But I never do enough stuff for myself. It's generally I'm trying to go somewhere and then I'm rushing, throwing it together. So this is okay. I'm going to definitely do that. I'm going to um, do more of my sewing for myself as well as get some pieces out there to go up on my website. That'll be coming. You'll be hearing all about that um, as we go forth in 2015. So anyway, um, I go, let's talk about superstitions. Do you all believe in all the like the little superstitions and things like that that you hear from the older folks from, you know, way back? Because I was I was pressed with one a day, like literally like I made sure I cleaned, you know, I cleaned the house and I made sure the clothes were washed and all of that stuff. I did that. My grandmother was always, you don't have no dirty clothes on New Year's. You do all that stuff, you know, before that and you do that and you can't wash clothes on New Year's Day, because if you do, you wash somebody out of your family. Now, I'm sitting and I'm laughing because I wasn't paying attention. I'm just doing me, right? I'm doing what I, I'm just doing stuff. So earlier, in the midst of me cooking and that, I says, okay, oh, I want to do this outfit. I know I want to do this outfit, so I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to start it today. I have the fabric, okay? But I decided, let me wash. I wanted to take the fabric and wash it before I cut it. So, in the midst of it, I'm like, all right, 
I'm on my way down the basement and everything to get to get done to go ahead and and get busy. And then I hear Miss Thelma's voice in the back of my head, honey, saying, um, "Excuse me, you don't wash in that washer on New Year's Day, or you're going to wash somebody out of your family." And I'm like, "Oh shit!" I'm literally halfway down the basement steps. Baby, somebody's ass was getting ready to get it. <laughs> somebody's ass was getting ready to get it. So I just, I, I stopped literally in the middle of the steps and I just broke down laughing. And I said, you know, carry your simple ass on back up the steps, you know, because you, know, you know I'm stupid. I said like, well, maybe we should just go ahead and test this and see if this is true or not. <laughs> and I said, cut that shit out going up some steps. But I did. Do you all know of any superstitions? Do you do you have any superstitions like that? Do you believe in any of those superstitions? Like, let me, it sounds so ridiculous though. Like literally, if you wash clothing or you wa run the washing machine, you're going to wash somebody out of your family. Like seriously, seriously. But at the same time, I'm not willing to put it to the test to see if uh, somebody goes or not. And probably the main reason being is that my mom is still living and I got two kids of my own. I don't know. I, I love the rest of my family, but I might have would have tested it with them, honey. <laughs> I might have tested it to see what happened. That was ignorant. Anyway, all right, but I just thought that was really funny, so I just wanted to throw that out there and then actually ask you guys, do you actually believe in that, those superstitions, or um, do you know of any other ones that you've heard of that tickle you, and tell me what you think about it. Leave it down in the comments. All right, guys, later. Bye. Thank you guys for clicking on the video. Okay, listen to this. It's, this I'm going to throw this in there as a non-stop November video here. I was just sitting there thinking, now today's Thanksgiving. Let's stop for a minute. Let's stop the trip for a minute. Hold on. Hold the mega bus, honey. Okay, listen. I know you got questions. I know you got questions, especially some of you petty ones, honey, who like to start stories. So let me answer some of the questions now. The skin and everything else that you're seeing with me and the difference in my appearance, no, it's no strange, uh, nameless disease. No, I'm not on drugs or anything of that nature. This was November of 2015. I was dead smack in the midst of my cancer battle. As some of you already know, I had lymphoma, and I never stopped making videos through my illness. I made videos while I was in the hospital. I made videos while I was at home. I continued to do and build my channel, all while being the big C, <clears throat> had our little battle. And that's where you will hear it in my voice. There was a point where I literally lost my voice dang near all together. I've actually taken like vocal lessons and stuff to get my voice back to where it is. And so, yes, vocal lessons are good for you, even when it's, when you're not a singer, sometimes just to talk, because my voice will go in and out. Um, it still does somewhat, but not as badly as it used to, because I actually work, it's a muscle, so you got to work it. But that is what is going on. So that ought to clear up some of the bull. But we'll see where it goes. You know how y'all do, honey. Down here to the tube. Okay. Driver, start the bus back up. Let's continue down memory lane. <laughs> and something that I just can't stand, something that kind of just irritates me and gets on my nerves is something that I don't do. So I'm probably going to step on a couple people's feet here. But that's okay. It's foot step in time. Um... Packing plates. Is there a specific etiquette to packing plates? When to pack? When not to pack? How much to pack? How much not to pack? That whole kind of thing. See, I always had a problem with it. I can't stand it. I'm like, I don't, even when I go places, people are like, oh, take some food. 
I'm not leaving. If I come in with gifts and things, because you tell you when well, you're supposed to come into a party with something in your hand, and you're supposed to leave without anything in your hand. Like that's it. So I don't do plates and takeouts, and I, I just don't. I just don't get into it. But I, I sit and I just watch. You know, I'm always observing, folks. And motherfuckers kill me packing up some shit and rolling on out. Sometimes it just is so ridiculous how you see people and the way they carry on with this pay plat, plate packing thing. And I know I'm not the only one. I know it goes on and people always talk about it after the fact about how some bitch that came to your house and taken half of your motherfucking meal home. Okay, so that that's what I came on to talk about. I just I thought it was funny, and then just I felt like I wanted to talk about it. And I knew I would step on some people's fate, feet in that. It is what it is, because today is Thanksgiving, and a lot of people are going to be hauling out food out of people's house like they at the goddamn grocery store. It's ridiculous. I've literally been, last year I was at a party at this girl's house, and the person that went to the party, that men went to the party with me. They just ran and they packed their plates. The girls said, well, come on, you know, she had plenty of food. And, you know, when they said it was okay for everybody, you know, to eat or whatever, and I really didn't even want to eat. I'm just like, whatever, you know, whatever. Child, I looked up, person come with me, then packed, not one, not two, but three motherfucking plates. And I wrapped them in a bag and I put them in a girl's refrigerator and then back in the line to get a plate to eat while you're sitting there. I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. I don't even know why you have a reason to even open up a person's refrigerator in their house. Because at a party, whatever's for you to eat is already out. So where is it in the etiquette that you even have a reason to be open in their refrigerator? Let's alone to be putting three plates in their refrigerator that you packed up to take home with you before the people's guests even got to eat. I have never seen such ghetto travesty in my life. It's ridiculous. And you see people doing this stuff all the time. Churches, their child at church, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. My cousin used to pack up so much shit at the church and then tell you all about how she sat and ate all her shit for the last three days. But you're literally packing things, you know, while they're, you know, because that's always the struggle. The church is always asking us to bring stuff. And I look over and this bitch is packing up shit. We, we brought stuff and we're always worried about having enough food to fit the fellowship with whoever we've invited to this church and you fucking packing for the week. Like, I, I was just, I, I, I just can't get with it. I can't get with it. I just never could get with it. And I don't. I won't even take a fucking piece of cake. People always say, well, take some cake for your kids. Any cake that my kids need to eat, bitch, I'll buy them. I'm not dragging shit away from places. And people do talk about you when you be packing up their shit and rolling on off. So, y'all leave it down there in the comments. What is that again? Because for me, it's me personally, and I'm speaking to me, and you can get mad if you want to, write it wherever you want. I don't really give a fuck. I've been here 43 years, and this is how I feel about plate, plate packing. The etiquette for me, you come in with something in your hand, you leave out with nothing in your hand. Your gloves and your hat and your motherfucking coat. That's it. I don't do no plate plate. plate, plate packing, not even from my own mother's house. I ain't dragging no food home. If that, you know, something for me to eat and I eat it there, that's fine, but I don't need you to drag your food home. That's just ridiculous. But anyway, um, one last thing. I had a party one time and a girlfriend of mine came to the party. You know, she said she couldn't really come to the party. She had, you know, she has kids and all that. So she had a teenager, but she had younger kids. She snuck down for a little bit, came down for just a little bit to the party. And I wasn't really aware of what was going on when I let child, I'm entertaining. And the folks said, oh, you didn't see her when she left? You know the silver pans that you use to cook hams and turkeys and shit like that in? Well, my good girlfriend had done taken and packed one plate a full plate, paper plate, of each dish that was at the party and had put it in the silver pan and took the silver pan on out the door with her. 
so deep to the point, and then that's just my girlfriend. That was her. She just ghetto and didn't give a fuck, and her feelings weren't hurt about nobody. They didn't give a fuck if nobody said nothing about her taking this shit, because the only person that didn't see her take it was me, because I am I had people upstairs and downstairs at my house, child, they was partying, you hear me, so I'm all over the place, I ain't even seen this motherfucker, she made a haul, like people make a haul and make videos where they did a haul from the dollar store, she did a haul for my damn party, I called that bitch the next day, I told her, I said, yeah, the people told me how much of the fucking food you took, bitch, and she laughed, because that's her, because she knows she, she ain't being embarrassed, I said, well, you know, I ran out of food, bitch. I ain't have no food. Ain't nothing left. So why don't you make me a plate and bring it on down? Now, I'm joking. I'm joking with her. Did this bitch not make me a plate and bring it down to me? And then told me, you might as well give me that cake because I'm no good. Well, you're not going to eat that cake. And I got all these kids up there and they'll eat that damn cake. Well, you know what? When you that trifling and that bold, ain't nothing you can do with that bitch. Take the cake and go on the fuck on out of here. Just, I just can't get with that plate pack and shit. Anyway, I just felt like coming in here and talking about that. Leave comments. I know some of y'all be probably be mad, but that's on your good plate packing ass. If I made you mad and I stepped on your foot, that's all right. A hit dog will holler. For happy Thanksgiving, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Okay, guys, I appreciate you hanging in here and watching and taking this little trip with us, but the bus is coming to a halt up here at the corner, honey. And just let me know, did you enjoy this? Should we do this again? Or, hey, it's up to you all. Let me know in the comments. Should we take more trips down memory lane? Or have you seen enough? Put it in the comments. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.